Hey guys, it's General Heed here. How is everyone doing today? So for today's video, I am going to be showing you guys 12 things that you probably never noticed before in Halo 2's cutscenes. So last time we did Halo 3, and uh, a lot of people found this stuff to be actually pretty interesting, so we decided to tackle Halo 2 this time around. And the first thing we'll be tackling, or the first thing I'll be showing you guys, is Master Chief in the Heretic cutscene. And no, I don't mean at the end where you know he's on Cairo Station and the armory with uh, Master Guns doing his armor and putting on his helmet and stuff like that. I mean, Master Chief is actually behind the scenes in the uh, at the very beginning when Arbiter is on trial during that part of the cutscene. Um, he's actually just like <laughs> he's just he's just like standing back there, you know, like staring at the crowd and stuff. Um, but yeah, so once we're yeah, so let me just pause the cutscene real quick and. Uh, Using this mod on the original Xbox, we can actually fly around and explore this cutscene a bit. Um, but yeah, so this is the part of the cutscene where Arbiter is on trial, and Master Chief is actually over here on the Prophet side of the counselors, standing right back here behind them, behind this pillar. Just uh, nonchalantly standing there and <laughs> staring and watching the trial, I guess. <laughs> He's observing Arbiter getting in trouble for him blowing up the Halo Ring. But no, nah, nah, he, he's not actually like. Lore-wise, he's not actually there. His biped is there for a very uh, specific reason, which I'll, I'll actually cover later in the video because there's actually something later on that's uh, similar to this, but I'll explain it later. But for now, you can see that Master Chief is actually here behind the cutscene, which you probably never noticed before. <laughs> now, for the next one, this is actually later in the cutscene as well. I did show this before in a previous video, but I wanted to cover it again because um, it's it's actually pretty, uh, pretty funny and... Uh, Actually, kind of reminds me of something from Halo 1, in fact. But during this scene, when uh, he's getting, you know, <laughs> scolded at by uh, Master Guns here, Chief puts on his helmet here, but you never see him actually put it on. He puts it's puts on uh, off camera. But if we pause the cutscene and fly backwards a little bit, we can see that Master Chief actually already has his helmet on. And it's a. Uh, when he puts it on, he's just putting on that helmet on top of his other helmet. Which, actually, if we remember. At the end of Halo CE or Halo One, uh, when Master Ch Chief takes his helmet off, we actually see that he um, he's when he takes his helmet off, it's another helmet underneath. And this cutscene is actually just like the reverse of that, where when he puts he puts one helmet on top of another helmet, uh, just you know the opposite of Halo One. Now this next one for number three is during the cutscene, the ending cutscene of Metropolis. Um, during and this actually happens uh, later on in another mission as well. But during this cutscene, when Miranda Keys is uh, talking to Johnson, shortly after this part, you'll see that she's talking to him on a screen, and later Lord Hood talks on a screen to her. So that screen here, if we um, zoom out again, is actually a mirror or a projection of an even bigger screen that's right in front of her, which obviously you never see this giant screen in front of her. Um, and also, when she's talking to Johnson, he's like actually right behind her. Um, but that's you know that that part's actually a little not surprising. But what is uh, pretty interesting, uh, aside from Lord Hood also standing right here, is uh, <laughs> there's a giant you know screen right in front of her, and it's being mirrored on the little console next to her to her left. So that is what uh, whenever like you see her talking to that screen, just know that that screen is like a mirror image of. That giant screen right in front of her uh, so <laughs> you never see it though because the camera never pans to her uh, to her cockpit window so that's why it's it all happens off camera but yeah it's that's that's where the, uh, the little mini screen comes from and like I said every time that uh, happens that is where it's that's where it's coming from <laughs> every time she's talking to a little mini screen um, but yeah so, for number four, uh, once again, I mentioned in the last one that there's another giant screen, and this one is on uh, Regret. So, at the, during the intro cutscene of Regret, if we um, fly out of the room where Master Chief is in, and we uh, zoom out and I let it play a little bit, Miranda's ship will appear again because she's talking to Johnson again on her screen. But this time, I pause right when it appeared, and she's not talking to anybody yet. So, there's nothing on the screen in front of her, so that's why that giant... Uh, screen is uh, it's all like messed up right now because there's nothing on it yet. But later, um, the uh, the right video and textures will be applied to it. Um, but 
let's uh let me get inside and get you guys a closer look it's uh it's actually really trippy if you uh, look at the screen like this uh, and and that screen is actually projected to her little uh, console as well next to her so like I said it's a it's a one-to-one -one mirror projection of it but anyways now that we're in here let me play it a little bit so you guys can uh, see what's going on so first it shows the skybox because like I said you never see the screen because the camera never pans to it but during the regret cutscene, it does actually pan to it, so that's why I use, it temporarily shows a skybox there, so you don't you don't think it's suspicious or anything. Now, later, when Johnson is talking again, and the screen didn't switch to him talking on the big screen. Um, from this perspective, it's actually pretty funny, and it, it reminds me of that movie, uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids Again, which is, uh, um, I don't know if you guys saw that movie or not, but it's <laughs> this is what it reminds me of, because it's like a, from this perspective, it's like a giant Johnson. It looks like he's holding... Um, the frigate, Miranda's frigate is like a toy. He's like trying to look into the cockpit, talking to her. Um, but yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Anyways, for number five, this one, I've actually also covered in the previous video a long time ago, but felt it was uh, important to include in this video as well. So this one, if you've ever wondered what the grave mine looks like below the waist, because we never see him below the waist, um, or even any part of his lower body at all. Let's take a look, and you can see what Gravemind's full body looks like, especially below the waist, because I know everyone's curious what Gravemind looks like down there. So this is it. If we uh, zoom out, look around the cutscene, and look at uh, Gravemind's bottom part, it's uh, he's actually just a, fl <laughs> I don't know, he's like a giant floating, uh, I don't even know what to describe this, but yeah, he's just like floating here, and Beneath it's like cut off and the bottom part is like really bad like uh, texturing down there because you know obviously you're never meant to see that but that is what the grave mine looks like he uh there's nothing else down there he um he's just that much um, he's not even attached to the ground or anything but that is what grave mine's full model looks like um, but I did do another video um looking at that but this time you can actually see his full model in action um, behind the scenes in a cutscene. Now this next one um, is actually uh, pretty interesting, and I've only noticed it a few times. And you don't even need a mod to do this one, but occasionally at the end of the quarantine uh, quarantine zone mission, Arbiter attacks Miranda Keys and Johnson, and he and Johnson have a brief little uh, fight, and he knocks out Johnson. At which point Miranda Keys, with her dual SMGs, shoots Arbiter, and during that part. A marine screen can uh, sometimes be heard. Uh, I'll let you listen to it now. Stay down. So yeah, there you have it. It's a random scream, and and, and to this day, I'm not really sure what it, what causes that. That was like Miranda Keys' battle cry, but uh, I guess not. Now this next one, um, you might have noticed this before in the cutscene, but if you look to the very left corner of this cutscene, it's easier to see on the Master Chief Collection version of Halo 2 Classic. But there's actually someone standing there in the background, um, to the left of Master Chief. Now I always thought it was a Marine on the older versions, but. On MCC, it was obviously a lot more clear. But for those of you who never noticed it before or don't have MCC, um, I'm gonna show you guys again what's going on back there. So let's uh, let's take a look at the cutscene and uh, pause here and then zoom out. So let's see, let's turn around and it is Master Chief standing back here with the beam rifle, while another Master Chief is in front in the cutscene. So what's going on here? Well, in pretty much every cutscene, uh, it, it uses a different biped for the cinematic. You have a cinematic chief being used here, and the um, the other master chief, the one that you play as, is usually hidden around somewhere in the mission. Um, and then later it's moved into the spawn point where you're supposed to be when the mission starts. So that's that's how it works. They they place your pl your uh, player biped somewhere out there, and it's the same with uh, the arbiter on arbiter missions. Aside from heretic, on heretic, I guess heretic counts as a master chief mission. That's why master chief is out there um, behind all the counselors and everything. But for arbiter missions, you won't find chiefs 
biped on these missions. Um, at least I haven't checked all of them, but I'm pretty sure you don't. But you will find your playable Arbiter biped, um, usually not too far from where the cinematic takes place. So here on the Oracle cutscene, here is your playable Arbiter. And as if you remember, you spawned an energy sword on this mission as well. So that's that's your uh, that's what you play as. But it's a different biped from the one used for the actual cinematic that we see um, that we see over here. So just a little fun fact there, I guess. <laughs> but yeah. Now, moving right along for number nine, this one is also um, a little interesting. During the Uprising cutscene, actually if you remember after the cutscene as you move forward as Arbiter, you see a bunch of dead elites everywhere that were killed by the Brutes. And there was one particular elite, the very first dead elite you see, where there's an energy sword next to him. Uh, he actually tells you uh, with his last dying breath that the, uh, the Brutes betrayed everybody and stuff like that. Now a lot of people dispute that and thought it was the Arbiter talking, but I'm pretty sure it's actually that elite talking. But during the cutscene here, as you can see, that elite is not there. However, all the other dead elites are. So, where is that first elite? And what makes him so special, actually? Well, let's take a look at how he uh, appears. So, right over here, let's, uh, let's resume. And there you have it. As soon as the cutscene ends, at the very end of the cutscene, that elite just spawns in alive and then instantly drops dead as well. So that's where his body comes from. All the other dead elites, their bodies were already placed there beforehand during the cutscene and everything. But that elite, for some reason, is different. And he spawns in alive for like a split second and drops dead. And I'm not sure why. Maybe it was something to do with him talking to you or something. But that's, uh, that's what makes him different than the others. Now this next one I pointed out before in the past, but I still think it's really funny. Uh, it happens during this cutscene here on Sacred Icon. Let's play it in slow motion so you can see. And this is in Halo 2 Anniversary, only Halo 2 Anniversary. But as the Phantom flies towards the the, uh, the library, it's flying backwards, which is actually, uh, I guess, a mistake on Blur's part when they made this uh, remastered cutscene. But, you know, the cutscene's still great. It's just really funny that the, um, the Phantom's flying backwards. And a lot of people never noticed that, and even I never noticed it. When it was pointed out to me, I looked closely like several times, so I was like, oh... Wow, you're right. But yeah, <laughs> now back to Halo 2 Classic. This next one is probably something that a lot of you have noticed before, uh, especially if you've played Halo 2 and Legendary, but it happens like very, for like a, only a couple seconds. But during the Gravemind cutscene, after, uh, right before Chief gets teleported to High Charity, if you play on Legendary, during this scene you'll see, uh, I, if I recall, that's Jason Jones uh, in his underwear, and he's just like floating there uh, for like a second in the cutscene. And I guess for this one, if you never noticed that, we're just going to give you guys a closer look. And what's also interesting that uh, it's actually, um, I'm pretty sure it's like very similar to the one, if not the same, from Halo 3. Um, on Mission Halo, there's that Easter egg in that one room where you also see a similar um, similar thing. It might be the, the exact same, actually. I don't remember off the top of my head. But yeah, I just want to give you guys a closer look of it on, uh, on this mission. Now, for our last item, for number 12, this one is outside of the post credits cutscene. The post credits cutscene is the one after the credits where uh, Gravemind is talking to Cortana and it's it's basically what's hinting and leading up to the events of Halo 3. Now, during this cutscene, there's actually a lot of interesting stuff outside. So we're going to pause here and fly around again. And before I show you guys what's outside of this room, let me show you guys uh, real quick where Gravemind's tentacles are coming from. Uh, so they come through uh, this tunnel, this hole in the floor, and as you can see, I assumed that they would just be like a bunch of float, um, short floating tentacles in front of Cortana, but no, they're actually pretty long, and they actually do stretch all the way down here. Uh, obviously, they cut off like at a certain point, but um, it's actually pretty interesting that they that they showed the full tentacles going all the way up through, even though you never actually get to see um, down the tunnel. So it is pretty interesting attention to detail. Uh, minor, but pretty interesting. Now, anyways, once we fly outside, we can see that we are actually still on the same mission as um, the Great Journey. And everything that was on the Great Journey mission before the credits, a lot of it is actually still loaded in outside the map. You would think that, like, actually, yeah, you would think that even during the uh, the Grave, um, not Grave Mine, the Tartarus boss fight, 
that a lot of the stuff, like the Scarab here, and a lot of the Phantoms that were outside during that mission would have been de despawned or deloaded. But they're actually not. <laughs> a lot of it's still out here. Um, like Phantoms, crates, and stuff like that, all still here. Um, so, you know, for some reason, it was never despawned. Normally, uh, it's common practice to despawn all the stuff on the map as a form of like garbage collection, you know, to free up resources for the cutscenes and other stuff later parts of the mission. But I guess they missed a lot of stuff here, because it's all still out here outside the map. But yeah, so that's uh, one of the little things that <laughs> are outside. Uh, it, it's possible that in other cutscenes, like outside, like in ending cutscenes, they a lot of uh, stuff on a previous part of the mission is still loaded, but uh, this is particularly interesting, especially like after that many uh, different like load zones and stuff and different parts of the cutscenes, it's all still there. But yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and found all this stuff to be uh, interesting. And uh, if you did, make sure to leave a like as always. And, uh, you know, like I always say, leave your thoughts in comments or just anything else we need to check out or look into. Or if I missed anything that you that you think people haven't noticed before in cutscenes. Or if there's something in the cutscene that I didn't notice myself during this video. Feel free to point it out and let me know in the comments. And, you know, I may do a follow-up or I may look further into it in a future video. But other than that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys next time. Bye, guys.